That's how the answer can go, is going to come out. can sort of guess part way and go right along rather rapidly. The, ma the mathematical rigor of great precision is not very useful in the physics, nor is the modern attitude in mathematics to look at axioms. Now, mathematicians can do what they want to do. One should not criticize them because they are not slaves to physics. It is not necessary that just because this would be useful to you, they have to do it that way. They can do what they will. It's their own job. And if you want something else, then you work it out yourself. The next point is the question of whether we should guess when we try to get a new law, whether we should use the seat of the pants feeling and philosophical principles. I don't like a minimum principle, or I do like a minimum principle, or I don't like action at a distance, or I do like action. The question is, to what extent models help? And it's a very interesting thing. Very often models help, and most physics teachers try to teach how to use these models and get a good physical feel for how things are going to work out. <laughs> but the greatest discoveries, it always turns out, abstract away from the model, it never did any good. Maxwell's discovery of electrodynamics was first made with a lot of imaginary wheels and idlers and everything else in space. If you got rid of all the idlers and everything else in space, the thing was okay. Dirac discovered the correct laws of, elect of uh, quantum mechanics for relativity quantum mechanics simply by guessing the equation. And the method of guessing the equation seems to be a pretty effective way of guessing new laws. This shows, again, that mathematics is a deep way of expressing nature and attempts to express nature in philosophical principles or in seat-of-the-pants mechanical feelings is not an efficient way. I must say that there is possible, and I know I've often made the hypothesis, that physics ultimately will not require a mathematical statement, that the machinery ultimately will be revealed, just a prejudice like one of these other prejudices. It always bothers me that in spite of all this local business, what goes on in a tiny, no matter how tiny a region of space and no matter how tiny a region of time, according to the laws as we understand them today, takes a computing machine an infinite number of logical operations to figure out. Now, how can all that be going on in that tiny space? That why should it take an infinite amount of logic to figure out what one stinky, tiny bit of space-time is going to do? And so I made the hypothesis often that the laws are going to turn out to be, in the end, simple like the checkerboard and that all the complexities is from size. But that is of the same nature as the other speculations that other people make. It says, I like it, you don't like it. It's not good to be too prejudiced about this thing. To summarize... I would use the words of Jeans, which says that, who said that uh, the great architect seems to be a mathematician. And for you who don't know mathematics, it's really quite difficult to get a real feeling across up to the beauty of the deepest beauty of nature. C.P. Snow talked about two cultures. I really think that those two cultures are people who do and people who will do not have had this, who ha people who have had and people who have not had this experience of understanding mathematics well enough to appreciate nature once. It's too bad that it has to be mathematics, and that mathematics for some people is hard. When one of the kids reputed, I don't know if it's true, that when one of the kings was trying to learn geometry from Euclid, he complained that it was difficult. And Euclid said that there's no royal road to geometry, and there's no royal road it's not the jaw, it, we cannot, as people who look at these things of physicists, cannot convert this thing to any other language. You have, if you want to discuss nature, to learn about nature and to appreciate nature, it's necessary to find out the language that she speaks in. She offers her information only in one form. We are not so unhumble as to say, demand that she change before we pay any attention. It seems to me that, uh, that it's like the, all the intellectual arguments that you can make would not in, one, in any way or very, very little will communicate to deaf ears what music, the experience of music really is. And all the intellectual arguments in the world will not convince those of the other culture, the philosophers who try to teach you by telling you qualitatively about this thing. Me, who's trying to describe it to you, but it's not getting across because it's impossible. I'm talk we're talking to deaf ears, and it's when the 
It's p- perhaps that the horizons are limited, which permit such people to imagine that the center of the universe of interest is man. Thank you.